Hello, hello. Today I made an insane mathematical discovery. I'm going to jump right in so I could show you what I'm talking about. If you're running any of these decks right here on screen, or any of these cards and decks that you're seeing on screen, you're going to want to stay tuned for this data and discovery, because what I have to say relates to these cards and something that they all have in common that they do. And to show you an example as what I'm talking about, I want to use uh, a question. What does Terrell and Sheeran purely and Marinza's blue tang all have in common with each other? They do something. Uh, and to sweeten the pot, uh, you see what I did there? Uh, what does the pot of duality, charge of the light brigade, and Sky Strikers Airspace Area Zero have in common? Or what about these extra deck monsters? What do they all have in common with all of the other cards that I just showed you on the screen? Well, if you are very, very astute or uh, looked ahead and already know the answer, these cards all either excavate the top of your deck or they send cards from the top of your deck to the graveyard and do something. They'll either add it to your hand or have a really cool effect. Now, these cards that all do that, they're either starters, extenders, or win more cards that are very critical to the deck's success. And you really want uh, the card excavated. It's, it feels like a jackpot and you really need that card. Well, I computed and did the math and data for how many cards you need in your deck uh, that are jackpot cards, whether you're excavating one, two, three, four, or five from the deck or sending five from the deck. And let me show you what I mean uh, by showing you the raw data first, and then I charted it as well. So this is the raw data. And I'm going to explain this. It looks overwhelming at first right now, but this is the raw data uh, that I did, uh, all the math that took me a long time, a couple of hours, uh, that I compiled here for you guys. Uh, and let me explain this chart. So over here, this is the number of jackpot cards that are in your deck that you're looking for, right? The number of jackpot cards that you're putting in your deck. I'm going to call those cards the jackpot cards. Like for the example, in the in the case of Marincess, they're going to be your other Marincess cards. In the case of Purely, they're your other uh, Purely Quick Play spells that you want to find with the little pearly cat. Uh, and on the top, these are the excavating cards. These are, uh, if you're excavating one, two, three, four, or five, right? So, because different cards will excavate different amounts. Like, for the example, um, the purely cards will excavate uh, three, right? Purely uh, excavates three. While um, Kikalos will excavate, uh, I mean, he'll, won't excavate, I'm sorry, it will send five from the top of your deck, right? So, your tier element cards or your jackpot cards you're looking for. So, uh, with that said, let's say uh, I have, let me let me get a little uh, laser pointer here. Let's say we're using purely, right? And we have uh, 10 other quick play purely scards. So this, this data right here, by the way, is from a 40 card deck, you drew five already. So when you're sending cards, you have 35 left. So this is all done from a 40 card deck that already drew five and has 35 cards left in the deck. That's what these numbers entail. So if you have nine purely cards in your deck, quick plays still, and you use purely's effect, well, that's a send, uh, excavate three. You go to the nine, you have a 60% chance to hit the other uh, purely quick play spells. So also let's, uh, let's say you used a Terrellements effect, right? You don't have that many tier elements because they're, they're they're banned or whatnot, and you only have five left in the deck. Maybe one's in your hand, right? Uh, when you drew your initial five, you only have a 37% chance to hit that other uh, card. And let, you know what I did too? Uh, I put this in a graph form because maybe that will be easier for some people to understand. And so this is the same information and data that I'm showing you, but graphed. You'll notice that the jackpot probability, when you only send one card, it's very linear. 
and we want to be over an 85 percent chance to hit uh, and that's why I had the heat map too, and 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 that heat map was showing that when it was green, those are kind of the ones that you want to run. And so we want to be at an 85% chance. So you can look and see that probably like just a little bit uh 10 for the purple. So for five cards that either excavate or send, you want to be running maybe 11, and so on and so forth. You can use this chart as how you see fit. But I'm going to talk about these cards and individually the different cards that excavate and send because Konami really does an interesting philosophy. So I'm going to call the cards that excavate or that send five card drop cards. You could see how powerful they are in that Konami, these are all banned cards that you're looking at. Konami banned these cards in the TCG. And furthermore, the cards that aren't banned are either used in very rogue archetypes they're very slow, like in the case of Needlebug Nets, that's a trap. Or they banned other cards. In the case of Ant Emancipators, they got rid of Block Dragon uh, because they were so uh, powerful, used with them uh, to make the, these cards rogue again. But if you do manage to get these five card drop cards, you need to be running 80, uh, 11 cards to hit that 85% chance of success of a jackpot card. So if you're using Needlebug Nest, you may need to make sure, and you have 35 cards still left to go, you need 11 of them uh, to be good. And they could be cards like, um, you know, Metal Foes Fusion or something like that. They don't have to just to, to continuously do stuff. Let's take a look at the four card drops. These cards, I noticed, Konami really makes them not really starters. Uh, you have to already have something with them uh to get it going right they, they're, they're not gonna enable them on their own and the cards that are starters that i noticed that do four card drops they uh are used in not not that good decks at all like for enchanted fitting room is for ajamas but if you are using them you need to have 13 cards a jackpot cards to have more than an 85 percent chance so when you're using Ojamas, you're probably only running maximum nine normals anyways. You're going to have less than an 85% chance. Uh, and so you, that's why Ojamas don't use Enchanted Fitting Room. And it seems like it would be a good a car to use, but you will miss more often than not. Three car drops, uh, the ones that are excavating and sending, these Konami are, uh, they, they're very happy with making powerful cards have this three card drop effect. And that's because you only need 16 cards to have an 85% chance to hit your jackpot. And that number is very interesting and pops out to me because in my previous videos, we talked about we want to be running between 12 to 18 cards anyways to feel comfortable whether we're running a one card or two card combo. And that number is right in the middle of that. And these decks are decks that do a lot of one card, two card comboing. Uh, so that's very interesting to note that Konami does seem to know what they're doing in terms of they are mathematically astute as well. The cards that are two card drops are the ones that are, are technically they're not really used alone and aren't really starters on their own and are usually combined and used in two card combo decks. Because uh, Naturia, for example, you have Naturia Camella that can... Uh, sends two cards from the top to the graveyard naturia beast also has that effect you'll notice that uh, raid in hand of the light sworn will send two cards uh to the graveyard but also all of the other light swarms also will send two cards to the graveyard and also uh during the end of the turn two raiden again will send two cards in case you missed very interesting but these cards you need 22 uh, jackpot cards to have the 85% chance but like I said these cards aren't really used by themselves anyways so that that number probably really isn't that relevant when you're using that and they're more of a bonus effect or intended to be used with other effects to get that amount to get a good amount finally the one card drops the card that are just sending one to the graveyard or excavating one card 
these cards are either can set themselves up uh, uh, by themselves, like in the case of King Backjack, that can already set itself up to have a trap on the top. Or, in the case of tuning and hitting armory, they are bonus effects. You really don't care that you're hitting a jackpot card with those. Uh, for tuning example, you, the, the main effect is you want to add the synchron card anyways. Or hidden armory, you just want to get that equip card anyways. And the discarding a card is actually a bonus that something good can happen. And you need to be running 80 bonus jackpot cards to be having an 85% chance. So like I said, it's really used to be set up by themselves, like in the case of King Backjack, or their bonus effects that uh, are just going to be used uh, as a bonus. Um, the Sylvian cards also are, are ones that send one off the top or, or something I could think of uh, like that. Princess, they, they, they run a lot of uh, excavating and sending different quantities amounts. I did a video on that too. Um, but anyways, I have another question for you. What card sends the top seven of both players decks to the graveyard you know there's a card that sends seven <laughs> oh. while you think about that for more stats please subscribe to these kind of videos uh if you like these kind of videos or if you're already subscribed please leave a comment what you think if you're going to change the way you do your deck uh if you're going to change the way you do your deck in the future let me know anyways to answer the question what card sends seven from the top that card is none other than the synchro card, Voltic Bicorn. This is a synchro card that if it's destroyed, your opponent and your by your opponent, both players send the top cards of their deck to the graveyard. Or, or by battle, by the way. Very interesting. I didn't, know, I didn't know that until I did research on it. Either ways, I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Bye.